Hi, my name is Jen. Let's talk about the binary choice tactic. Have you heard of it? The binary choice tactic. Are you a feminist? The answer can only be yes or no. And if your answer is no, you're a bigot. If your answer is yes, you're in the clear. You're good. You made it. You answered right. But you also have to buy into all of the rhetoric that stands behind that term in this modern, modern world. Let's try another example. Do you believe in climate change? If your answer is no, you're again a bigot. If your answer is yes, then you obviously have to buy into all of the leftist solution and into the panic. But this is not black and white, right? Rarely is anything black and white, and in this question, there is actually no panic needed. This is a tactic that the left is using very well. Greta Thunberg has finally come to America, but in Sweden, we have dealt with this climate panic for over a year now. And I have to say, <laughs> on behalf of sane Swedish people everywhere, we are sick and we are tired of it. I am tired of hearing about it, I am tired of reading about it, and I'm tired of talking about it. And yet here I am. Why? This video is really not going to be about climate change. This video is really about the fall of Sweden and how it's so damn convenient that Greta Thunberg came from here. That she is the prophet of panic all the while Swedish citizens have been told to sit down and shut up for so long. Sweden has never been safer has been the slogan from the media and the establishment. And I am not here to censor myself. I am not here to talk around the issue. It is quite clear to everyone that has been paying attention that our issues stem from mass immigration. It is laughable that our government calls itself feminist while it is quite clear that women and children are the ones who are suffering in the most gruesome ways. I deem rape and suppression of freedom to be the most heinous of crimes that are happening within our borders today. One could say that all of the Swedish government is left wing. Still, the right wing, which are who are really just center democrat in American standards, are as recently as yesterday got called racists for acknowledging that we can't put the entire suffering population of the globe into Sweden. Sweden seems to want to save the world and burn itself in the process. In a political debate in a In a political debate between the parties in parliament, the increasing gas prices were discussed. It was quite clear that the green parties just want to raise the gas taxes until people just don't drive cars anymore. Completely ignoring that so many of us live in small, rural, remote towns or even outside of them. It is common, just like in America, that households own two cars to take their kids to school and themselves to work. We can't take a bus that does not exist. We can't buy to work when work is 50 kilometers away or more. Celebrities condemning air travel while on their private jets. Rich influencers wanting government to take on dictatorship strategies to implement green ideas. Rich politicians condemning plastics while their party hands out plastic ring covers with their logo on it. For the regular Swede, the climate cult is all a bunch of privileged, out-of-touch elitists. I am tired of talking about Greta Thunberg, and I am sure you are too. Many people have said it better than me, and those videos and articles I will link under this video. They put on a good spectacle though, and the strategy worked perfectly. I mean, the media team behind Greta Thunberg, of course. And asking kids to skip school? Fucking brilliant. What a better way to create a believable astroturf. And what a way to make yourself untouchable by making the leader of your movement a child so that any criticism of the movement itself can be boiled down to child bullying. And yes, I know, I know, there has been some nasty comments made about her and I do not condone them. But what person in the political debate has not been made fun of. For years and years, the Swedish media and the establishment has warned us about the rise of racism and white nationalism. For years and years, the Swedish Democrats and their voters, voters have been labeled racists for talking about issues with mass immigration. And now we are here. 
the issues are severe. And a couple of months ago, it peaked when a woman, while carrying her baby, was shot in the head and killed. All of a sudden, it was a great time for politicians to condemn the crime in Sweden, but the damage had already been done and is being done all around Sweden. See, what happens when you bring in more people into your country than your country can handle? What happens when you bring people into your country that does not want to learn the language or adopt its values? It's an interesting dichotomy here in Sweden where we are extreme in the social justice department with the feminist government, politically correct language, and things like gender neutral daycare. But then we have a rise in sexual harassment and rapes and gang rapes on the other hand. Some cultures we are bringing here have no respect for Sweden and some have no respect for women. This is the hard truth. The migrant crisis, as it was called, came in the year 2015. Only one out of 10 of these migrants had a job within two years, according to the most recent statistics. Eight out of the 10 municipalities that took in the most migrants now have higher unemployment rates than the average municipality in Sweden, according to the same study. There just aren't jobs for unalphabetic migrants, a person from a qualitative study on one of these cities mostly affected by the crisis, harshly states. Sweden has a very generous welfare system. The thing is that the welfare system is bleeding. The taxpayers can't pay for people who don't give back. The Swedish welfare system is built on taking and giving back we have high taxes to pay for school, health care, elder care, and to be, hel- be able to help the less fortunate or unemployed to get back on their feet. However, the problem is that many, pe- many of the people who are coming here are not humble towards the fact that they are getting help from the taxpayers. There are too many people who never get employed. Too many people bring crime, spit in the face of Swedes, and live on the taxpayers' money. Sweden doesn't owe it to the world to save the less fortunate by bringing them here and letting young criminals burn this country down. Sweden wants you to talk about climate change because they would much rather talk about plastics than how the Swedish politicians are talking about hot food being too expensive for the elders and they can wear blankets to justify lowering the heat in the elder's home because the municipalities can't afford to take care of them. At the same time that we are paying for people that never give back, we are spitting the elders in the face, the people who built this country. The people who have worked all their lives get worse treatment than the criminals burning cars who keep getting paid by the system. I am of course not insinuating that all immigrants living in Sweden are living on welfare. I think it's stupid to try and misconstrue my argument to petty xenophobia because it's way too clear that the altruism that we strive for by letting too many people in is having dire consequences. It is not petty racism to talk about it uncensored. I am extremely saddened by this. I want to see change. I want us to have an honest discussion about this. I want the world to look into what happened to Sweden and not follow in our steps. I want the Swedish politicians to get some fire up their asses and do something. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. If you like this video, you are welcome to like and subscribe to my channel to see more. I also have a PayPal if you want to support me and I have a Swish. Thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot. Bye.